While we've got a couple of minutes, just in case you haven't heard the announcement, we're making every session. Please come to the pub afterwards, the Toffee Maker and Blacksmith, where there's lots of money from our favourite sponsor, Thunder, um, for us all to have beers, drinks, whatever you fancy. Five o'clock immediately after this talk. Is it that long? Um, it's, it it it's just three minutes walk around the corner, back in the Angel Station. How many into QA? Okay, okay, great. So, uh, yeah, I mean, what and why we had? So, when we speak about we had, it's like the first thing that strikes us is it's open source, it's free. Wow, anyone can, you know, just get started with we had. You just know how to install it on your machine and you can straight away use it. 
So basically it was, uh, it is a PHP testing framework which is available and it was, you know, inspired uh, by Ruby's uh, Cucumber project and uh, we had this also called as, you know, the official uh, BDD or the official Cucumber, uh, cucumber for PHP. And um, we had, uh, when, we, when we talk about BDD, what does BDD mean? So, BDD, again, it is uh, not, nothing to do with TDD. Uh, you are going to drive the development uh, with the behavior of the software. You want to identify or you want to know how, how the software should behave from user's perspective and what the clients want. And uh, that's why we say that, you know, that it validates business use cases. And it's uh, more of verification. So, it's so a difference between verification and validation. Before, before knowing that you know uh, whether the system is being built in the right way, it is really important to know whether you're building the right system at all in the first place. And that's where BDD comes into picture. And uh, we had promoted BDD. Uh, we'll be talking about Gherkin. We'll be talking about uh, how do we automate your. Uh, test cases or how do we automate your, uh, how, how do we write automated scenarios that we call in Bihar and also the several extensions that are available in Bihar. So the advantage of these extensions is that these are ready to use PHP libraries which you just plug in and um, you know and they offer great benefits. For example, we have Drupal extension available to test your Drupal pattern scenarios. We have Mink extension wherein you can um, automate your scenarios to interact with your website. Yeah. So before uh, we go ahead with the installation of the app, there are some prerequisites. So you need basically a, a Mac server or a LAN server depending on the OS you have. And uh, you need a system-wide composer installation which is preferred actually. So for the local installation, um, you just create a root directory, call it anything, you can call it Behat, you can call it Behat demo or you can give it the project's name and um, you start with the composer.json file. Uh, how many of you all know composer, how to use it? Uh, okay, so yeah, so composer, you just list all the dependencies that you require in your composer file and um, you just go ahead with the composer install command. Uh, Behat.yaml file is a configuration file wherein uh, you activate all the extensions that you require for the project. So for example, we'll be talking about Mink extension in today's session. So you'll be activating um, that in your YAML file. It's basically just a configuration file uh, which helps you with many types of settings. You can, uh, you can uh, you can create various profiles in your YAML file and it uh, really you know, helps you to get rid of all the coding that is required. So YAML file is just quick configuration and ready to use features. Uh, you will have to initialize your uh, bhat uh, by the command um, bhat space hyphen hyphen init and uh, once your um, uh, bhat is initialized you will have your um, vendor directory, you'll have your features directory, you'll have the bootstrap directory, we'll go ahead, I'll, I'll talk about the structure of Behat in the coming slides. Um, and you can also see the list of predefined step definitions uh, by using the command behat space hyphen dl, which will uh, give you a list of ready to use predefined step definitions. Yeah, so this is just a com uh, sample composer file that you can use. Um, we are majorly interested, so when we talk about Mink, what we need is we need the Behat uh, dependency, we need the boot driver, we need the browser get the Mink extension, Selenium 2 driver because we'll be talking about that as well. And there are some extra dependencies that I have listed. So the Behat screenshot dependency is uh, used for capturing failed screenshot, uh, failed steps. So whenever any scenario is uh, failing, the screenshot gets captured. Then there is one um, uh, reporting uh, dependency that I've used here, uh, which is Behat HTML formatter, just to generate some fancy reports. So yeah, so uh, this is the structure of Behat. You have your JSON file, you have your YML directory, you have your features directory. 
So features directory is basically responsible for holding all your feature files. So as of now, uh, you can just see there's a sample file called test.feature. But if you take an e-commerce site, for example, you might have many such feature files like uh, search.feature or maybe checkout.feature or myaccount.feature. So all the feature files uh, reside in your features directory. There is a bootstrap directory which contains uh, a very interesting file, featurecontext.php. And that file uh, actually contains all your custom step definitions. So um, we'll talk about custom step definitions also. So, so there are two parts. So there is something called as ready to use step definitions and there is something called as custom step definitions. Of course, you have your YML file. Yeah, so um, this is a, a sample YML file. If you can see, we have uh, at, the way you can activate your extensions here is um, line number 18. So there is a mink extension which uh, is declared at line number 18. And if you're using Drupal extension, you can activate that extension as well, line number 26. So um, you can, you can uh, also decide on the browser that you want. Uh, the default that is going to be used for Mint is the boot driver, which is at line number 20. And uh, in case you have any Ajax related or uh, JS related steps in your scenarios, um, you can use the Selenium 2 driver. There are other drivers available as well, but I'll use the Selenium 2 driver here. Yeah. So uh, we've been talking about feature files, yeah. and uh, feature files is really that we are mostly interested in. So what does a feature file generally consist of? Feature file is written in a language called Gherkin, um, which is read by your cucumber, cucumber pattern actually. And um, all your feature files will start with the keyword feature, mentioning what kind of a feature it is. So maybe you know you would say that as a site visitor, um, in order to be able to search through the site, I should be able to type in some terms and search. So that would be your feature. Uh, background is an optional keyword and background is generally uh, used for uh, setting up some kind of test data and or maybe you can say it is a hook that runs uh, before every scenario in your feature file. Uh, it just makes the feature file more readable, it makes it more cleaner because uh, whatever steps are, uh, whatever consecutive steps are common to each scenario in a feature file, you actually club them and put it in a background. And uh, so that kind that just runs before every scenario. Then you have the main uh, thing, which is scenario. Scenarios are nothing but actually tests in your uh, VHAT. So maybe you know, uh, as I was saying, the search feature. You can have multiple scenarios. Like uh, as a guest user, I should be able to search through the site. There would be another scenario. As an authenticated user, I should be able to search through the site. The third scenario would be. Um, when I search through the site, I should be able to see various filter options, like you know, uh, sort by ascending or sort by high, low. So you can have multiple such scenarios for search search feature. Um, all all of them need to uh, start with these keywords, all the scenarios which is given when then, and you can uh, make them more readable by you know using and and but statements. Um, I'll, I'll go to a sample feature file later. Yeah. So um, coming to Mink extension, I mean, what it is doing? Really. Mink extension is something that you will use to automate your interaction with the web application, right? So for example, if you want to fill in a contact form, what would a user do? User would uh, go to the contact page, fill in all the details, hit the submit button. And uh, all of this uh, can be automated. And this particular scenario can be very well automated using the Mink extension. Uh, it's a ready-to-use um, extension, and it's just a plug-in PHP library. Um, of course, so um, yeah. So basically, so we have these browser emulators, like we have uh, we have Goot and. Uh, uh, we have Selenium 2, then we have Browser Kit, and so so. 
what is what is the speciality of Mink? So there are two there are two kinds of browser emulators. Like one are the headless ones and one are the controlling ones. Of course, they come with their advantages and disadvantages. Um, the headless browser emulators uh, are like you know they are fast and uh, uh, they are fast and they can handle um, JS related steps. They can handle AJAX related steps and um, so, and sometimes, you know, you will need both sort of uh, browser emulators. You will need the ones which are uh, like, you know, and sometimes you want uh, emulators which uh, which uh, which are like fast and uh, which open up a physical browser or something. And there are, uh, and there are uh, browser emulators which, uh, which are faster uh, than the controlling ones. But of course, they have the limitation of not handling Ajax or uh, JS related steps. So in such cases, what do you do? You do not get st stuck with one sort of browser emulator. Like you want a mix of all of this. So how does Mink? So Mink actually, you know, it hides the API differences between all all these browser emulators. How? By with the with the help of Mink drivers. So you have a Selenium two driver which will, you know, just um, uh, so so these so these Mink drivers uh, they kind of. You can just use the main drivers, you can configure them in your YAML file and uh, you can make advantages and you can basically create a rich test suite, some which would run in a headless mode, some which would run in a browser mode. <coughs> yeah, so uh, if, we, if we take this particular uh, feature file, so if you see at line number one, it's just a good practice to tag your feature file with the feature it is actually. So if, if I say that this is a feature file that I have created for authenticated users, so I've just tagged it as auth user and uh, the feature says that as an authenticated user, in order to perform various activities, I should be able to log into the site. So this is uh, so this particular feature file is created using Mink extension. So none of the lines in this feature file have actually any code written by me. So this is something which is you know ready to use. There is there is some code there is some blue code written behind this, but which is like you know coming from the Mink context. And uh, so if you see this is pretty readable enough. Yeah, you say that you are on uh, you are on some login page and you fill in. Uh, these two elements, username and password, with the uh, I mean, with the credentials, and uh, <clears throat> the scenario actually starts at line number thirteen. Verify that um, you are able to log in successfully. How will you verify that you have logged in successfully? You will be you will be adding some assertions. So line number fourteen and fifteen are nothing but assertions. You are just verifying that you can see your name and you can see the link log out, which is fair enough and which will which will give an assurity as yes, you have logged in. So this is by purely using Mink extension, you don't need to write any any PHP code for it. So yeah, so I, I did talk about Mink drivers. We have uh, many Mink drivers available. If you want to know uh, how they differ, what are the advantages and disadvantages, you can uh, go to the link that I mentioned here. Yes, and um, I, I spoke about execution as well, right? There would be browser-based execution, there would be headless. If you want a faster uh, test execution, go for headless uh, execution. But if you, I mean, there are you there are requirements when you need to you know execute in a particular browser, say Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. You can execute on those browsers as well. Um, so what are profiles in Behat? Um, again, profiles is something uh, which is quickly configurable in your YML file. Uh, when do you use profiles? Uh, it's simple. For example, if you have multiple environments. Um, in most of the projects where I work, uh, there is a requirement that as soon as the code deployment is done on test environment, uh, all the scenarios need to be executed on, on the test environment. Then there is a UAT environment where uh, only smoke related scenarios need to run on um, the UAT environment. So basically you just create uh, different profiles for uh, test for UAT in your YML file so that you need not go and um, make any extra changes. It's just, you know, um, we'll, we'll talk about it when I show you the YML file. Yeah. 
there, there can be multiple browsers as well, right? So for example, you can run your scenarios on Chrome, you can run your scenarios on Headless Chrome, or maybe you can run your scenarios on PhantomJS. Uh, or you, we want to run particular scenarios on, um, on, on say Chrome or in a headless mode. So you just you can create different profiles uh, as per the browser cat type as well. So how does it work? Is So uh, it's going to override, uh, it's going to actually inherit whatever is there in the default profile available which starts at line number 2 but uh, it, it is going to have its own settings as well. So here if you see, uh, I have created a profile for running tests on headless group. So, so what, what you need to do there is you just need to change the settings for um, headless group. Sorry, I think I've just cropped the screenshot. So below line number 35 and 36, you would see the settings for running uh, all the scenarios on headless Chrome. <coughs> yeah. Um, well, you can uh, run selective scenarios as well. Uh, many a times you would see that uh, you know you are you are designing a scenario and you just want to run particular run that particular scenario to verify whether it's actually working or not functioning or not. So um, so you or you can just tag it as work in progress currently since that's the work in progress scenario if it's not completed um, and uh, you you definitely don't want to. Um, have it running on your test suit because it's not complete. So you can uh, exclusively, you know, exclude that uh, all the work in progress scenarios from your uh, current test suit execution. It's a simple configuration in your YML file. Um, you can also run tag scenarios like, um, uh, I, as I mentioned, right, on every UAT deployment, uh, you just want all the smoke scenarios to be run or there is some uh, change in feature. So if there is a small, slight change in um, a checkout feature, you just want to run all the checkout related scenarios to identify if there are any regression issues. So this, all of this can be done via um, simple configuration and uh, the tag scenarios can be run via command line. Yeah, so uh, group by execution, so that's the example, how do you run all the smoke tagged scenarios? So that would run all the uh, scenarios which are tagged as smoke only. Uh, if you want to run a, a single scenario, uh, you can mention the line number. Uh, so basically you can just mention the feature file name and the colon uh, line number. That would run only one scenario. Um, you can exclude all work in progress scenarios from your test suit execution um, by configuring it in your YML file. So if you see uh, line number 5, 6, 7, uh, that would be the configuration to exclude any scenarios from your entire test suit execution. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we'll talk uh, slightly about uh, custom step definitions here. So uh, whatever I spoke uh, in you know before about make extension, yeah, it's it's very powerful. You can uh, get started with automating your uh, test cases, your scenarios by writing no code in no time, and you just need to understand how to use those uh, ready to use step definitions. You just need to understand how to use Gherkin. Uh, but uh, we have primarily was not built only for that. Yes, that is a byproduct that we got out of we had. Uh, BHAT actually purely promotes BDD and the way it promotes BDD is uh, you know, can be explained very well with the help of this example. So um, you have a client and, and for instance you know the client says uh, uh, any authenticated user should be able to perform a certain set of activities. So say for example uh, we, we previously wrote a scenario for a similar uh, scenario right verify that you, uh, you can successfully log in. So um, actually, it would be good if I had a you know comparison screenshot. But uh, I mean, what is more readable? Is this scenario more readable? So what is, what does this scenario say? That given I am on the Drupal Camp London page, when I log in using valid credentials, 
then I should be able to see my account section. This definitely sounds more readable uh, than this, right? Right? What does this say? That uh, given I am on user login, when I fill in edit name, I mean these are just some uh, uh, details of the attributes of the elements that you are interacting with. Right. If you want to make, if you if you want to promote BD one hundred percent, and if you want to make them one hundred percent readable, that is also supported by BHAT. Yes, but here um, the challenge is, and if you really want to challenge yourself and go ahead with programming and all, uh, take this approach and just write some glue code behind it. So the glue code behind it would look something similar to this. Uh, you can create uh, custom step definitions. Now these are called custom step definitions uh, since these are not uh, directly available by Mink. So you can write these custom step definitions in your feature context file and uh, just write the corresponding glue code. So when you say that you are on the Drupal camp landing page, uh, you know, so I have just directed it to login and you fill in all the valid credentials. So you just fill in all the details. You fill in the password, you use a name, password, hit the press button, and you just uh, verify something that, uh, so I've just verified that the text Shweta Sharma is visible. And that's it. Yeah. So these are some uh, widely used uh, BHAT extensions. Uh, there is Drupal extension, which is extremely uh, useful for automating your backend scenarios. There is Symphony, there is Screenshot. If you want to go ahead and create a page object model, there is a page object extension, there is Laravel. Then there are multiple extensions available uh, to test your APIs. So you can go ahead with any API extension which suits your need. There, there are some reporting extensions and so on. So, um, so with headless browser, uh, so that would cover uh, using a profile and a headless browser as well. So for example, um, I have created a profile over here called headless chrome and uh, so I will be uh, running a particular feature or maybe this entire feature file on headless chrome. So I have already created a file called demo.feature and it has few scenarios uh, wherein it is verifying a lo successful login, user can log out, uh, it's uh, verifying that user can update his or her account with uh, multiple business types, I mean with every business type. So and um, again user can upload a photo to the account. Uh, so this is scenario outline which slightly differs from scenario. Uh, scenario outlines uh, is generally used when you want to perform the same set of actions over different uh, data. So if you see I have uh, created a scenario outline to ensure that user can update his or her account by all type, uh, by selecting uh, all types of uh, business. So how this, how this thing runs is it's going to consider each line from 31 through 35 as a single scenario. And this is how, so your basically your feature file looks cleaner, or or else how would you how would you you have written this is that you know if you if you consider this as individual scenarios you would, you would have written it as when I follow edit and I select Drupal customer from this particular field and I press save. This next scenario would be when I follow edit and I select digital agency. So you would have created so five such scenarios. So instead of creating different five scenarios, you just created one scenario outline. <laughs> Um, okay, let's go ahead with the demonstration. <coughs> yeah. So um, this is how you use profiles. So you give the um, so you say just say hyphen p equal to h, uh, that is the name of the profile that is created in your YML file. Yeah, so all these scenarios now would be executed on headless chrome with the help of profiling. Oh yeah, and before that, uh, you need your chrome driver to be running in the background.
which is running here. So, uh, so if you see, um, we had actually four scenarios, but only three have been executed. The reason is that we have excluded the work in progress scenario here. So that did not run. The one that was tagged as work in progress. This one. Uh, okay. Now, if you want to run any uh, particular scenario on a physical browser, so for example, if I want to, so my default profile is actually of a Chrome browser. So I need not mention any profile as such. By default, it would pick up. So uh, any scenario which is tagged as JavaScript uh, would run in a physical browser. That is because we have mentioned that the JavaScript session would use the Selenium 2 driver and it would open up a Chrome browser. So uh, this is how you execute a single scenario. So if I say scenario number 38, yeah, that's the scenario we are interested in, right? That's how you execute your scenarios in a browser too. And if you want to run any tagged scenario, uh, the command is very simple. You just <coughs> yeah. So only the smoke scenarios run. social media and uh, we also have a full day training at DrupalCon Nashville. It would be a training on uh, BHAT with Mink and Drupal extension. So if you want some hands on, you can attend the workshop as well. And if you want to uh, read more about BHAT or uh, more about how you can uh, utilize it in your projects or how you can create a framework, uh, you can read our blogs on our website as well. And there are some quick references. Um, we had uh, we, we had as a quite uh, wide support type for online available. So there's quite some support available um, on GitHub on Stack Overflow. Uh, the documentation is a bit outdated, but if you face any issues, you'll definitely find the solution online. <coughs> Scenarios running part of uh, Travis as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I found on uh, Drupal VM that if you install Drupal from via Composer, then you can get VHAP running fine on it. If you install um, from, say, the binaries from a, the table, if you install Drupal from the table, you, you cannot get VHAP running with it. You cannot get VHAP running with it? I mean, what, what it, start, it, it starts, it complains about, um, uh, about any version mismatch? Yeah, it's, it, you know, that's right. I think it is it's some sort of version, version mismatch there, but uh, it talks about not being able to access um, parts of code uh, um, dynamically. 
Oh, okay. Are you are you talking about a Drupal context here? Yes. Wherein yeah. you yeah okay, wherein you want to execute your uh, Drupal context scenarios on a remote server? Right. Are you? Uh, okay? No, I want to I want to execute within um, within the VM. Yeah, yeah. That is very much possible. Sorry. That is possible. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with it. But it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. yeah. As I say, it it, it, it depends. It's, if you install from the uh, travel, your vendor folder ends up in your side room. Whereas if you install from the composer, your vendor folder is below your uh, side room. Um, but it doesn't matter. You know, I've tried and tried. I spent days trying to get it running at the time. Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, getting VHAT running with CI uh, might get challenging in few situations, but you can get it working. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm sure you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so we have. That's what I did immediately. <laughs> <laughs> because we have our VHAT scenarios running almost on all the projects. We have it running on some sort of CI. So we we use. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah I've, I've got it running on Bitbucket pipelines, no problem. Can't get it running on. <laughs> okay, maybe we can uh, connect. Uh, Any more questions? So to exclude um, one tag, you have to use the, the tilde sign? Or yeah, you have to use the tilde it. sign. That is kind of to not include that tag. Yeah. So um, you can do it via command line as well. So when it, so you saw that you know I ran a command uh, saying uh, tags at the rate smoke. So you can also kind of say and at the rate tilde and so you can do it via command line as well. But uh, uh, setting up it in YML file can be uh, helpful if you want to run on your tests on some kind of CI. So you know, it would automatically exclude uh, all the work in progress scenarios. So that's the reason you uh, use your YML file. So this would also exclude your work in progress scenarios, this command. Do you have any tips for working on sites that have lots of um, scenarios and lots of features? Um, so for instance, I work on a site that has probably have more than a thousand scenarios and just running through all of those now takes between like four and five hours, just getting to be so long that it's a diminishing value. Um, well, what we do is uh, we, we tag our scenarios as smoke. So, so I, I mean, are your scenarios running on every build or something? I mean, how do you? Yeah, for each uh, feature branch. For each feature branch, right? So, what we do is we have tagged our scenarios as smoke, and on every, uh, on every, you know, uh, whenever a PR is generated, only uh, the smoke-related scenarios get executed, and we are also coming up with a plan, you know, where in uh, there would be a nightly run, and all the scenarios would be executed only nightly just to ensure that there is no regression introduced. Uh, and there is a requirement from the client wherein they have said that uh, for per PR, you know, the execution should not exceed more than five to seven minutes. <coughs> so that is a limitation even we have. So you have to be very clear. And that should happen in parallel because, you know, once you have 1,000 scenarios and then you have to sit and tag is actually, you know, can get troublesome. And that's the reason I mentioned that it's a good practice to tag your feature file and scenarios as and how you design them. So for example, if you tag your feature files in the beginning, uh, as per the feature it says, maybe you know, at the rate search or maybe at the rate checkout, and go on tagging your smoke scenarios as well. Smoke scenarios. So you can use the, the feature of tags the way you want. Tagging and profiling, and there is also an extension available for uh, running your tests in parallel. So, with the combination of these three features, uh, you can also have parallel execution in B Hunter. Yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you so much. I want to remind uh, everyone who have had three minutes on the road, lots of free drink. Thank you. <laughs>
would be like a lot more beneficial. Yeah. Uh, and I'm having a lot of problems across multiple environments. Where, it's especially because of Nihan, you can do that so easily. Yeah. So I'm looking at, yeah. Yeah, with the profile thing, yeah. it's just a quick configuration thing. Yeah. yeah, because I'd like to be able to do it so it triggers yeah. just like with a hug every time that we do a order. Yes, yes. So the problem is. So you have a CSV, you need a CSV. Yeah. But I don't shell. I don't see any problems. No, I'm doing it. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you.
It is because you can see people are like it's very political.